Stroke 3, mud, SA10, right 2, close. Stroke 3, Sam, right 2, defending. Are you always being shot down by SAM sites? Welcome to the second episode of the Tactics and Maneuvering series on the suppression of enemy air defences. In this video we will take a look at how air defences work, the different ways they can be suppressed, as well as some seed tactics. Let's get started. As with my other videos, this video is not affiliated with any country's armed forces and I am not a qualified fighter pilot. All the information in this video is open source or found through my own testing and analysis and as such, no classified or otherwise protected material will be discussed. All tactics, techniques and procedures discussed are applicable only to DCS World and are for entertainment purposes only. An air defence system is a blanket term for a range of different techniques to provide anti-access area denial or A2AD. This may be in the form of either surface-to-air missiles or SAMs, anti-aircraft artillery or AAA, directed energy weapon systems, drone swarms or tactical anti-ballistic missiles. In DCS World we only have SAMs and AAA as the two types of simulated air defence systems so these will be the ones I will cover in this video. To suppress an air defence system we have to stop its ability to carry out its primary mission which is destroying strike aircraft. For this to be achieved we have to first analyse the way in which an air defence system operates before working out ways in which we can disrupt this intended operation. There are a number of different components that are the same between different SAM site variants. A typical SAM site will consist of a search radar, a track radar and the surface to air missile launchers. The search radar typically covers a 360 degree field of regard with a low amount of accuracy and provides situational awareness to the SAM site. Targets detected by the search radar will be prioritised and the highest priority threat is sent to the track radar. The track radar has a very small field of regard but with very high accuracy. The track radar is used to cue weapon systems to the target of interest. The service to air missile will then be launched against the target locked by the track radar. SAM sites may sometimes also have a command and control centre or C2 centre that can communicate with other installations. The use of data link and communication between these sites creates an integrated air defence system or IADS. When a surface to air missile is launched it has two phases, the boost phase and the cruise phase. The boost phase is where the rocket motor is burning and the missile is accelerating. The missile has the most amount of manoeuvrability during this phase so flying evasively will only waste your energy and not the missiles. The cruise phase is where the missile has run out of fuel and is just coasting through the air, steering using aerodynamic control. This is the phase where you want to cause it to manoeuvre as much as possible to bleed all its energy and engage its self-destruct command. All the Russian SAM sites in DCS with the exception of the SA-13 and SA-9 use semi-active radar homing missiles. This means that the tracking radar needs to maintain constant lock to guide the missile to the target aircraft. If the lock is broken at any point during this so-called kill chain the missile will go dumb and self-destruct. With this knowledge of SAM sites we can begin to work out means and ways to stop the SAM site from operating in the way it was intended to. SAM sites can be suppressed in the following ways. Destruction, Distraction, Disruption, Degradation, Deception and Deterrence. The first and most effective way to suppress a SAM site is to just blow it up. A missile cannot be launched if the track radar has exploded or if the launcher itself has been destroyed. This method of suppression by destruction is also referred to as DEED or destruction of enemy air defences. Weapons used in SEED are typically anti-radiation missiles which are passive radar homing missiles that track the emissions of ground based radar installations. The AGM-88 high speed anti-radiation missile or HARM is the weapon of choice in DCS and is used widely in real combat. Other weapons can be employed on SAM sites such as laser guided bombs, air to ground missiles, standoff weapons and conventional weapons like dumb bombs and cannon rounds. The F-16C Viper is also equipped with the CBU-97 and CBU-105 sensor fused weapons which can be used to very effectively take out an entire SAM site in one pass. The second C technique is distracting a SAM site with false targets while the actual strike aircraft transit through unharmed. 
Tactical air launch decoys or TALs are glide unmanned aerial vehicles that have a similar or larger radar cross section than the aircraft deploying them. This creates multiple decoy radar tracks on the SAM site's radar screen, causing the operators to launch missiles at the decoys. A TALD is relatively inexpensive, costing approximately US$24,000, which makes it perfect for wasting missiles like the S-300's 5V55 missile, which costs around US$2,000,000 each. TALDs can be used to try and expend all the missiles that the SAM site has to render it useless or to provide cover for the real strike package as it transits through. Disruption covers the use of electronic warfare to disrupt the radar's operation by blinding the radar or providing a false range. The FA-18C has the Airborne Self-Protection Jammer or ASPJ. This provides deception or gate-stealing jamming. This creates a false target that moves away from the aircraft, luring the target radar to track it instead of you. The F-16C has the ALQ-131 and 184 external jamming pods that enable both deception and noise jamming. Using chaff can also disrupt and break the radar lock on your aircraft, which causes the missile to self-destruct. For chaff to be most effective, you should aim to have terrain behind you or be very low to the ground and be notching the SAM site's radar. Degradation covers techniques where the SAM site's effectiveness is degraded by using up all of its missile stores or taking out key components of the site. Once the site is degraded to a point where missiles cannot be launched at the attack aircraft, a follow-up attack will mop up the remaining components. Deception covers techniques to deny the SAM site operators a lock on your aircraft through stealth or terrain masking. By flying very low, i.e. under 300 feet at the minimum, or behind mountains, the radar cannot see the aircraft and is denied a lock. The use of stealth to reduce the aircraft's radar cross-section denies the radar operator a useful lock and enables safe passage for the stealth aircraft. SAM sites are operated by humans who are alive and they tend to want to stay that way. For this reason, if a harm is fired at a SAM site, the operators will turn off the radar to stop the harm tracking. The simple act of having seed aircraft in the local area around a SAM site will produce suppressive effects through deterrence. In the mission editor there is the option to allow SAM sites to evade anti-radiation missiles which makes seed possible in DCS world. We will now take a look at some SAM site defences before moving on to single and two ship fighter tactics. The drag S-turn is used to bleed a surface-to-air missile's energy by causing it to lead the aircraft through a series of turns. This technique is also very simple so you are less likely to make mistakes in a high stress environment. To fly it, once you receive a missile launch warning, enter a speed sustaining turn through 270 degrees, then reverse the turn through 180 degrees, then reverse through another turn of 270 degrees. If this manoeuvre is flown at the edge of the SAM site's engagement zone, the missile will run out of energy away from the aircraft and self-destruct. Take care not to get too close to the SAM site or the missile will still be able to shoot you down. This circuit also allows the release of a towel or a harm on the inbound leg, doubling the number of wasted missiles on each pass. The turn and dive is a last ditch manoeuvre to try and force the surface to air missile to fly into the ground. Overbank to 135 degrees and start a diving turn to the beam. Roll out and bunt as required to force the missile down. Level out just above the deck in an attempt to terrain mask and with luck the missile will impact the ground or self-destruct. A very sketchy manoeuvre that was used against Soviet SA-2 sites in northern Vietnam was the take it down manoeuvre. Upon receipt of a launch warning the pilots would turn towards the SA-2 and enter a dive to pick up speed. After its 6 second boost stage, the SA-2 would fire its sustainer rocket and begin gliding. The missile would then be pointing down and going almost Mach 2, and at the precise moment the pilot would pull hard back on the stick, causing the SA-2 missile to miss. Defending against AAA is fairly simple, just don't fly straight and level. The ZSU-23 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, or SPAG vehicle, shoots 23mm rounds out of its four autocannons, and uses a small radar to calculate the required lead on the aircraft. However, as soon as the round leaves the barrel, it is completely ballistic, meaning it has no mid-course guidance capabilities. So if you manoeuvre even slightly after the rounds leave the barrel, you will defeat those shots. 
Equally, if there are no SAM sites around, as soon as you receive a AAA RWR warning, just initiate a wings level pull and climb to 10,000 feet, and then they won't be able to shoot you down even if they wanted to. We will now go through some simple single ship tactics. High altitude self-lazed GBU-24 bomb drop. For shorter range SAM installations, simply fly over the top of it and drop a big laser guided bomb on it. The best suppression is destruction. For more information on laser guided bombing, check out my guide in the top right corner. Medium altitude harm or air to ground missile shot. Fly towards the SAM site and launch a harm or air to ground missile at it before entering the site's threat zone. Depending on the site, this will destroy the track radar and render the site useless. Low altitude harm attack. For modern SAM sites with massive engagement ranges, a low altitude harm attack is the only way to destroy its track radar. Ingress low level and fire two harms at 12 and 9 nautical miles to ensure good probability of kill, as most modern SAM sites can shoot the first harm down. For this tactic to be effective you need to be under 300 feet so that the radar cannot see you over the terrain. Flying above 300 feet is almost certain death. The SA-10 has a clamshell low altitude target acquisition radar on a tower specifically designed to pick up low flying aircraft. Once the track radar has been destroyed, the rest of the site can easily be taken out in one pass with 8 JSOWs in target of opportunity mode. For more information on how to use the joint standoff weapon in DCS, please see my tutorial in the banner above. While this is efficient, each JSAW costs between 282 and 719,000 US dollars, which, compared to the unit cost of a simple Mark 82 at 4,000 US dollars, is crazy to be wasting on basically mopping up. For this reason, military pilots learn how to do both conventional and pop-up patterns for unguided bombs and strafing. These patterns are designed to significantly reduce the chances of being hit by small arms fire by reducing the exposure time when rolling in to mere seconds. If this is a tutorial you would be interested in, please be sure to subscribe and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see next. Let's now take a look at some two-ship tactics for Seed Deed. Buddy Lay's Laser Guided Bomb Drop. For SAM sites with longer ranges that inhibit overflight, drop a laser guided bomb and turn away while a second plane lasers the target. This has the benefit of working on larger SAM sites without the risk of being shot down. Coordinated harm attack. With two or more aircraft, coordinate multiple harms to hit the target at the same time. Depending on the site, the targeting radar won't be able to shoot down all the harms before it gets hit. Combine this with a low level ingress to increase probability of kill substantially. Coordinated harm and tailed attack. In this method, one aircraft launches tails while the other ingresses at low level. The SAM site will only be able to see the tails and will begin engaging them. At 9 miles, the low level aircraft launches a harm that impacts 25 seconds afterwards. The SAM site doesn't have enough time to react and the track radar is destroyed. An adapted version of this tactic is also very effective on smaller, self-contained SAM launchers like the SA-15 Tor and SA-22 Panzer, and it moves the decoy launching aircraft to the opposite side of the engagement circle so that the launcher physically points away from the harm aircraft. This means that the harm will be too close when the launcher finally detects it and decides to turn around and engage it. This tactic was coined the Here Kitty Kitty tactic in northern Vietnam as it lures the launcher to point in the wrong direction, enabling a successful attack. Finally, the most important thing about suppression of enemy air defences is to know thine enemy. When attacking an installation, you won't be going up against just an SA-6 or just an SA-10. You'll more than likely be going up against a mix of SAM sites, AAA and short-range man-portable air defences, or man-pads. Intelligence gathering is very important both in DCS and the real world, as going into a situation with no intel is as good as a suicide mission. Make sure you analyse what units are at a base and determine what the highest value asset is and focus on destroying that first. Once that's taken out, take out the next thing, then the next thing and keep going until everything is destroyed. On screen now is a helpful cheat sheet for various SAM sites, both Red 4 and Blue 4, and their various statistics and ways they are vulnerable. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel as it helps me out a ton and allows me to continue making these videos. If you have any questions or corrections, do please leave them in the comments below and I will read and reply to all the comments that I can. Thank you very much for watching.